For me, he's one of the best players I've ever seen and one of the best players to have ever played for Ireland. I think Alex Ferguson said he had an almost poetic athleticism about him and I think that sums it up perfectly. I very rarely saw a forward beat him. If they attempted to take Paul McGrath on, they lost the ball. He just was a natural athlete with the ball at his feet. Oh, he's gone short for Strachan. Like a training ground routine, but he's broken for McGrath. But the amazing thing I always felt about Paul then was he never realised just how good he was himself. And that was just so nice, really. When it comes to examples of just how good Paul McGrath actually was, then June 18th, 1994, at Giant Stadium in New York, stands out in the memory. The extraordinary thing is to look at any recordings of that, of that match. One of his arms is literally hanging by his side. But I think Jack Charlton knew that even a half-fit McGrath had such a profound impact on that team, he had to play him. And Paul had this moment, it only lasted about 20 seconds, with Roberto Baggio, who at that time was one of the greatest players in the world. Dino Baggio, and in goes Roberto Baggio, McGrath's head got there. Dino Baggio once more, again it's McGrath. And now Baggio once again. Signore Baggio. McGrath gave what I consider to be the finest individual display in a team context that I've ever seen. If Roberto Baggio and the boys were still there, now they wouldn't score. It was 1982 when the Black Pearl left Inchicore and St. Patrick's Athletic to sign for Manchester United. But it took time for the then United manager Ron Atkinson to realise exactly who he had on his hands. Even though he signed him, he never really considered him as a first division player, which it was at the time, until one day he looked out and he saw this image of McGrath on the training ground and he said he just was the image of Ruth Gullet. He's an Irish Ruth Gullet. And in the early days, he still had the big, bigger afro, um, so he's very noticeable on the pitch. Paul achieved a lot in his time at Old Trafford, including an FA Cup winner's medal. But injuries and more personal issues began to undermine his position at the Theatre of Dreams. And then, along came a new manager. And there was a huge clash of personalities, and Paul just did not get on with Alex Ferguson. He felt he, he couldn't communicate with Paul, that Paul was just this big gentle giant who maybe didn't quite absorb the seriousness of what was happening in his career. Alex Ferguson brought an end to Paul's United career in 1989 by selling him to Graeme Taylor's Aston Villa. But this cloud had a very definite silver lining. I knew he was a very good player. I knew he was a very good defender. I didn't totally understand how serious the drinking problem was. The human being in Graham Taylor saw that I can help this guy and, and I can help myself and Aston Villa and we can turn this guy back into an outstanding centre half. But he gave us back so much in return for that, in fact more, because on a Saturday, you, you, you had got one hell of a player. This one hell of a player turned out to be Aston Villa's best player for the next seven seasons. Just as he so often was on the international stage for Jack Charlton's Ireland. I think he was one of the key men under Jack in that, that fantastic emergence in Euro 88 and then the World Cup in, in 1990. And it goes McGrath! In many ways, you know, could we have achieved what we did do, you know, without Paul? You know, you'd have to say there could be a serious question mark over that because he was that good for Ireland. When you add Paul's footballing prowess to his enduring popularity, he was always going to make your top ten. I love the story about when Nelson Mandela visited Ireland and the crowd started singing, ooh, ah, Paul McGrath's da, and Mandela was going, what was this? For some people, if they say the best player that Villa ever had, you'd see McGrath at the top for a lot of Villa supporters. There's only one Paul McGrath. I know from talking to him, he's absolutely thrilled to be in the top ten and he's mad keen to find out who the other nine are. 